all of us probably here on this call and probably even in the audience have had similar messages from other leaders in our own lives. And hopefully you've benefited from that as well. So I think it's it's somewhat of a one-sided debate, but I'm interested to hear more about, you know, an argument that would say maybe strategically, what are some of the things that global expanders need to think about in terms of their education? You know, what what's really essential and what may not be? And so Erica, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for pulling this together. We love Resmarks. Uh, you're one of our favorite members because of your capability, your enthusiasm, the reach you have around the world. And so really um, thank you so much for pulling this event together and we're here to support you. Uh, Erica Hartz of Resmarks, please take it away. Thank you, Doug. Well, obviously, Global Chamber is uh, close to the Resmarks heart. We've uh, been networking on it and connecting, and I, I think it's been two and a half years at this stage, and there's zero regrets. I know I've made a few intros at this point, and I only have positive things to say, so thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so um, I am going to share a PowerPoint presentation just for introductions. Um, uh, for everybody watching, oh, started at the end. Okay, so for everybody listening in, thank you so much for joining. Um, we really wanted to discuss the importance of education for your career growth. It is so often in the Resmarks world because we cover global recruitment that sometimes people lose opportunities or get opportunities based on their education. And so internally, it was a conversation we've been having for years. And I finally thought it's a great opportunity to get a lot of different people's opinions and have a debate structure sort of globinar to hear these different thought processes. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, it's going to be debate style. Um, so the first two people that are gonna be against each other is going to be Ivan and Steven. So just a brief breakdown. Now, all of their information is located on the Global Chamber or the Resmarks website. So if you wanna find out more about these individuals or you wanna connect with them, they're also gonna throw their contact information in the chat box. So just be ready for that and prepared for that and you can get more info on that. But the first two speakers are going to be Ivan and Ivan is an award-winning sales professional and CEO with a US recruitment agency, Hamilton Demo. They're actually a really strong partner of Resmarks and the whole idea of this Globinar came from Ivan and I were talking and we actually had a sort of informal debate of our opinions of education and the success and growth of an individual in their career. And so we sort of looked at each other and said, this should be something that more people are having conversations about openly and understanding that different opinions are perfectly fine. Um, so that's sort of where that came from. That's Ivan. Um, and then we have Steven. Steven is actually a Resmarks employee. Um, he is our business development executive. He's based in the UK, but he is quite global. He has a few languages under his belt, as well as um, has worked in probably every part of this globe. Um, he is not only a strong account manager, part of the Resmarks team, but he also has a little bit of experience with debate and uh, a conversation about education came up between him and I, and I thought he'd be a great person to join in. So the first question that's going to be posed to start this debate for Ivan and Steven specifically is going to be, if you could change the educational process, structure, or requirements, what would you do? Ivan is taking pro-education side, while Steven is taking that he feels education is not a necessity for your career growth. Next two speakers that will come fully after Ivan and Steven go through their uh, debate process will be Milo and Paul. Uh, Milo is a managing director of 1807 Careers, head of international at E2E, which is a strong partner of Resmarks, and he's also an advisor to Latin American companies entering the UK. He is a networking um, connections and sort of global expansion guru in my eyes, and that's why he's a really strong partner to Resmarks. Um, and then Paul, Paul is the fractional VP of sales at Invicta Sterilization. He's also the VP of sales at Sales Acceleration, which is a strong partner of Resparks, where they train, mentor, as well as fill in positions of sales roles to assist with global expansion. So they have a really interesting um, dynamic, both in mentoring, training, networking, and also growth, which I thought would make for a good sort of pair. Um, the question that will be posed for those two would be, 
Should education hold back promotions or job opportunities? Milo is taking the pro-education side, while Paul Fields education is not a necessity. Um, and then myself, you already introduced me. I'm the Global Partnership Director with Reesmarks. My role and goal every day is to connect with many different services that assist with global expansion outside of the recruitment and actually inside of the recruitment space just to better suit our clients as they grow internationally. So the overall debate structure is going to be five minutes for opening statements per each speaker. Then it goes into counter arguments, which will reflect the opening statements. The rebuttals will be two minutes each person, which would then go against the counter arguments. And then the closing statements is just to give their final thoughts, answering that question that they were assigned, as well as getting their point across. Now, everybody in this debate was in some ways, some given their side of the debate. Um, so naturally in a debate, you have to go extremely one-sided to get your point across and share everything. So just know that opinions that are shared today are sort of extremes. Naturally, all of these speakers have opinions that are variable and in that gray area. So just know that this doesn't reflect them as a person, as well as it does not reflect their company in any way. Um, it's just going to be a fun debate to get a lot of different ideas out there regarding education. Um, we're also going to, if you see me hold a three up, that means that the speakers have 30 seconds left. So with the times allotted that I had broken down, we want to make sure that we keep on time. So if you just see a three in my picture come up, it's only for the speakers to understand that. And then my final thought is that we're not talking about doctors, engineers, anything where education is obviously a necessity for your growth in a career to get into a position. This is going to be around business minded roles. So we're talking sales, operation, marketing, maybe even finance in some some parts uh, or some industries. So that will be that. Um, the first person to speak regarding the question of if you could change the educational process, structure, or requirements, what would you do that? That will be Ivan. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. I am going to start the timer. Oh, um, and final thought, there is a poll at the very bottom of the bar. You can at any point share who you feel is making the best argument. If you're just blown away right after they're done speaking, you can put your poll in there. Um, as well as at the very end, we'd love if you waited to the very end to listen to everybody and share who you feel like made the best arguments towards the debate. And that will be fun to promote after the event. So like I said, Ivan, I am gonna put five minutes. I'll warn you at the five minute mark, but you are good to go. Thank you, Erica. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, Stephen, good morning. It, it's going to be uh, fun to uh, chat and debate with you. So I, I would like to share with everyone first a little bit more personally, because as I reflected on this, I, I look back at my own career. In my 20s, I, I received my bachelor's. And uh, during my 30s, I, I was uh, um, pulled into my supervisor's office and he strongly suggested that I get my master's. So in my 30s, I got my MBA. And in my 40s, I had the privilege and honor to attend Harvard Business School for my executive leadership. And now that I'm in my 50s, I, I am embarking on my doctorate at the University of Dayton. So each one of those steps I, has, has not only opened my eyes, but has really reinforced uh, my my stance and views on being pro education. Um, not only not only has it opened my eyes to uh, new new opportunities for skills for interaction, uh, engaging in business, uh, but it's truly a allowed me to see other views and perspectives, especially as an employer. And as Erica as Erica mentioned, uh, I am in recruiting. So I, I also get to see how the, the, the education, the, the degree attainment actually opens doors. I think ultimately what we wanna do is have options that uh, we, we can embrace and take advantage of. I think during our careers, the more options that we have, 
is better for us. When those options begin to dwindle and begin to go away is when we become concerned. And having a degree keeps the door open to more options coming, coming in. I also reflect on, on the, uh, those emerging individuals into the workplace, whether young or um, mid-career, where they're trying to get to that next level. And as many of us know as well, there's a lot of education around credentialing, a lot of upskilling, et cetera, which although not in a formal uh, institutional setting all the time, uh, education is taking on different forms uh, that I think will um, our society and our, our, our globe, our global commerce will embrace as well. So education is clearly the great equalizer here, uh, I, I believe. If, uh, if, one's, if one is looking for skills to engage in global commerce, to gain the, the cultural competencies that the global commerce is bringing to us, Education uh, uh, can bring that, uh, can provide those skills, the knowledge set to, to make us successful. As a matter of fact, again, as a recruiter, I see all the time when employers are using degrees as a form of assessment. They believe that their, their organizations are strong. They have something to provide to the economy and to potential employees. And they, they use that education, whether it's a bachelor's degree or a master's degree as an assessment of, of embracing and bringing in these employees. So what would I do differently to, to make that I, um, to, to make education uh, better for everyone or easier is truly that I'd open it up. I think what the great barriers to, to attaining a degree is time, because a lot of us, as we begin to work in our careers, time is a great constraint. And the, the financial commitment. I'm really happy that here in America, we have, uh, we, we have a, a country that embraces that and tries to make it easier. But once you get past high school, that barrier, that entry becomes steeper. The cost of education is high, which I, which I feel the, the, the better as a country and as a global economy that we can make it more accessible for those to gain those, uh, those credentials, those degrees, uh, a lot of things will spur from that. There'll, there'll be more entrepreneurship. There'll be uh, people who can enter into organizations, hit the ground running and have uh, more of an impact uh, than they would have if, if they had not had that degree. So, uh, Clearly, I'm pro education, and uh, Erica, I see the three minutes. So, uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Stephen. Perfect. Yep, Stephen, go right ahead. Wonderful morning, uh, our North American viewers, and afternoon to people here in Europe as well. Um, thanks for your opening statement, Ivan. Um, yep. So, I'm going to be representing the counterpoint to to this question. So, uh, I'm not against education, but I do believe that it's an imperfect system that can be corrected in a number of ways. Um, I speak on a personal level myself, um, graduated from, from high school in the UK, uh, did a university undergrad degree um, in modern languages, uh, studied three languages there, didn't take a master's, um, and now in full-time employment with Reesmarks. Um, and I guess the first point I'd like to bring attention to is four names, um, Alan Sugar, Steve Jobs, um, Bill Gates and Richard Branson, something they have in common is that none of them finished education, none of them finished their college degree. Um, and yet they're four successful people who have had a huge impact um, on tech, on the world, on how we view economies and, and, how, and how we live our lives every day. Um, so essentially what I feel that we should define exactly at, at the start is, is how we define education. Um, is education uh, a preparation for higher education? Is education a preparation for adult life? Or is education um, a preparation for a working life? So um, I believe 
in my personal view, I believe that education, um, that being from um, primary level education up towards college, uh, university level, should be to prepare and give a person the basic life skills that they need to survive. Um, and essentially, uh, there are several hurdles uh, which stand in that way, be them economically, um, be that the way that universities and, and schools are set up. Um, for example, uh, in my opinion, um, schools in the UK do not provide the basic level of um, preparation that that pupils are looking for. Um, and actually, and actually, in a, in a study, uh, eighty four percent of Brits who came out of school and eighty four percent, eighty seven percent of Americans said that they didn't feel that what they studied at school left them with the necessary skills to survive every day, and they would have preferred to have lessons in budgeting. Um, in DIY um, and also in mental health. Um, whereas um, having been through the, the British school system uh, 10, 15 years ago myself, um, I can think of a number of things I learned which I don't use nowadays, such as algebra, Pythagoras theorem. Um, I guess it depends on which, which career you're in at the end of the day. Um, but essentially for me, those are skills that um, I'm not finding that I use so much now. Um, on a more economic front, um, both in the United States and in the UK, um, universities and higher education sets students back with a high level of debt. Um, I personally left with um, 50,000 pounds worth of debt. And in the US, um, there's a study that showed that uh, the, the debt increases every year, but currently it stands around 30, 31,000 dollars at the point of graduation of a, of a bachelor's degree, um, which takes years for students to pay off. And, um, as, as someone who um, sees scandals, um, for example, in my last year of university, there was a huge, there was a huge measure uh, against the, the chancellor of our university who was on £400,000 salary, um, and yet students were not feeling that they were getting the support that they needed, the services that they needed in, in the university. Um, people wonder why education has such a high cost, but on the face of it, we don't see where our money's going. And I feel that's a real failure to the education system of people who um, are looking to really grow themselves and their self-development, uh, that, that their hard-earned money is not being used in the right way. So um, it also translates across to the US. Um, I feel that um, having spoken to people I know in the United States, um, the system's slightly different to ours, whereas we are quite specialized and we study uh, very precise number of things in, in, in college level and um, uh, university, the Americans tend to have gen ed, which uh, I feel does not, uh, does not allow students to specialize enough um, and, and teaches them again, subjects which they don't actually need or have any desire to study. Um, yeah. It's been shown the science, so I think I'll wrap it up there, but um, yeah, I hope that's a good introduction to um, how the education system can be improved. Perfect. Okay. So now, Ivan, your next stage is going to be five minutes of a counter argument. So the side that um, Stephen's argument is making is that we're not defining education universally in a correct way. So there are so many people walking away that they're not prepared life ahead. Um, so you can begin your counter argument right away. Yeah, thanks, Erica. Um, thank you, Stephen. I, I would like to point out, though, I, I felt, Stephen, like you were making my point for me, because those individuals that you mentioned, although leaving school, those are truly the exceptions to the rule. As, uh, if, you look at, if you look at the CEOs and those that lead our, our global economy and that we revere and look to, they've all had higher education. And even those exceptions to the rules, there's an argument that can be made that their interaction and their learning before dropping out of school was, it, uh, was directly the result of their success. So Bill Gates, when he was at Harvard creating what he created, you know, he developed Microsoft or the idea of, uh, of his technology and software. You've got uh, Facebook that was created at Harvard, all these other individuals that started off in a learning institution, you can say that uh, that it's directly from what they learned from those that they in interacted with in the classes that they learned. So 
Uh, in addition to that as well, it is an imperfect system. I think we can all agree to that. I even mentioned that that's a barrier that we need to overcome is the cost. Uh, but some things that you can't argue with is that those with uh, bachelor's degrees and master's degree make significantly more money than those that do not, right? Yes, we're, we're, in a, we're in a day and age where people can be very successful without attaining a degree, uh, whether they embark in entrepreneurism, uh, in a trade or uh, take, take something or, or gain a lot of experience, um, that, that's true. But even with that, there is still a significant gap. Um, and uh, I'm happy to research a little bit more to, to uh, document that with uh, some research later. Uh, so those are some of the things that stick out to me. And I, I would ask you, you know, show me, show me something better. If you've got something better, <laughs> tell me what it is. And uh, some of the things that you shared with me as well to improve or possibilities to improve down to me as though it's pro-education, but improving it, enhancing. We need to enhance and make it uh, more efficient for everyone, not just a select few, right? So it, it, it uh, I think, again, with more education, there's going to be more um, equity um, across the board, and people will be able to have those options that I, I shared with you previously. Um, and again, the more options we have, which I think education naturally brings, uh, doors open up, we're all going to be better for it, uh, not just as individuals, but globally, company-wide, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so let me... And Ivan, you have a minute 45 left if you just want to further add to your originally open, opening statement, or we can jump yeah. right into Stephen's counter. Yeah, let me just also add to, I wrote some notes here, and I, I covered a lot of it, but uh, you know, global chamber, this is a global economy. And I, I do, again, uh, picking up on some of the things that Stephen said, that it's, we're, we're not just talking about one country or just one state or region. Uh, when we learn, uh, when we learn and attain these degrees, we're really embracing a global economy. Uh, this global economy that we're in, uh, education provides us the opportunity in, in an in a environment that we can uh, embrace and learn how the other side of the world thinks, what, what they bring to the table, how we can leverage, um, how we can grow and expand our own ideas, our own businesses, et cetera, as well. So uh, that's what I'll, I'll end with. Perfect. Okay. Um, alrighty. So now, Stephen, remember you are doing your five minute counter. So your counter is to his opening statement versus his counter argument. You will have two minutes for a rebuttal to answer the question that he addressed. Um, and your time starts now. Perfect. Um, yeah, no, no, absolutely take your points. And, um, you know, of course, there is, there is a fine line between, you know, looking at education, and improving it. Um, Essentially, I'm just looking at how we can change the, the educational guidelines. I do want to pick up on, on how you mentioned that there are people who are successful without education. Um, I do feel that there are people who feel forced to enter into education against their will. Um, as you know, it's the, it's the popular majority belief that education is the global equalizer. Um, and so they feel that going to university will be the silver bullet to getting them a good degree a good education or that it's just an experience i.e um, a coming of age that they need to achieve um, i myself was living in halls of residency um, with with other first year students when i when i started um, and actually one person in my flat dropped out and i remember at the time i was looking at, at stats and, and and more recently actually reflected there was one university which had a 20 percent first year dropout rate um, in the university of bedfordshire uh, in the UK, um, obviously the, the elite unis have have a lower dropout rate, but it just feels that people are making a snap decision that they need an education because they feel forced into it because they don't feel confident enough to stand on their own two legs. Um, and so 
when they do actually land and are forced into a situation where they imagine that they'd be um, out, at least in a UK setting, drinking, partying, um, having a social occasion, not actually going for, for, for the studies, then it does sort of, in a sense, um, invalidate people who are going to uni because they actually want to study, um, invalidating the, the value of a degree. Um, and that is another point I wanted to move on to as well, is that there are, there are people who, who go to uni and they're just looking for the easiest route through. Um, because at least for myself to an extent as well, it was about getting that piece of paper at the end that says you've got the qualification. Um, there are subjects going through uni like, that I didn't want to study like literature, but it was just, okay, can I get the highest grade possible in this? Yes, okay. Do I think about Portuguese literature from the 18th century today? Not at all. Um, so um, there are facets that I find interesting, you know, the core, the core modules that you have to study. Um, but for those sort of extraneous points, I do feel that um, sometimes it's not shaped in the best way and it doesn't give the best portrayal of higher education that it could do. Um, also working in the same sector as you, Ivan, um, with, in terms of um, education and, and recruitment and promotions and careers, um, I can, I can understand your point that education opens doors, but if you look at it from a slightly different angle, um, then education actually closes doors. I mean, I've worked with clients who have, unfortunately, at, at this point in time, refused to give out offers since, uh, since they are having a hard requirement that candidates have a master's degree. Um, and if, relating back to my previous point, that more and more people are going to uni now um, and we're not sure about their reasons for, for studying. Um, more and more people have a degree. And so how do we differentiate between all the people who have a degree now? So what, what becomes the, the new way to differentiate the, you know, the cream of the crop, so to speak? So master's degrees may become uh, a requirement over the top of bachelor's degrees now. And so you know, it's pushing people into increased levels of commitment in terms of education just if they want to secure themselves that higher tier paid job that you mentioned. Um, I certainly don't want to feel pressured to study a master's degree when coming out of uni. I felt almost ready to, um, to study, uh, to, to work into full-time job straight away. But even myself, I, I worked in hospitality in a bar job um, before, before working in recruitment. So, um, and, I, and I feel that, you know, working in a bar and you know, having those sort of, I say, cash management skills, customer relations skills, were things I didn't learn at university. So um, there definitely are routes of moving towards a successful career, which don't necessarily involve, you know, inherent and strict education measures. Um, and you know, it, I would hope now that in 2022 we can move past a point where people are required to have an education in order to one, find a job or to receive a promotion to become an executive level. Um, so Erica, did I see the three fingers come up? Sorry, I was speaking into a camera, so I didn't see uh, properly. <laughs> yeah, we have only about a few a few seconds left. So do you feel, do you want any other sentence to end it out on? No, um, happy just to cut it there. Perfect, okay. So um, just to give an outline, because I want there to be somewhat structure. So in um, Ivan's opening statement, uh, he ultimately said that there are doors being opened by education. Um, and Stephen's counter discussed that these doors might be being opened, but they're forcing people's decisions. So his overall counter was that there's more of a force for education rather than a desire for education. So Ivan, you have now two minutes to have your rebuttal against his counter argument. Yeah, it's perfect. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Stephen, I think you're absolutely right and that's why education is so important uh that force that they're being that we're all being uh pushed towards is really um dictating the decision for education to be so important to get that degree uh, because commerce industry uh business owners leaders are wanting that degree so much. So what do we do? It's kind of like money, uh, you, what you follow the money in the stock market, right? You don't go to all the stocks that are losing money or that their stocks are, are degrading and, and sinking. 
you follow the money. The, the companies that are succeeding, that are expanding and growing, you put your money and invest in those that you feel are going to be successful. And so these business owners, those, those individuals, those companies that have the jobs to give are demanding that you have the, the education. And that's why it's so important. Um, I, will also, I will also say to you, yes, there are a lot of people that decide to not complete their degree once they go to university. Uh, but the other side of that is another great question to ask. How many of those people have regret and uh, would, would uh, if they had the chance to go back, would not, cha- uh, would not drop out? How many of those people who dropped out would say that it has made their careers more challenging uh, to have been a dropout than not to have attained their degree? And how many of those dropouts, when they had the opportunity, went back to school? So all those things I'd like to know, uh, because sure, I mean, you, you know, it, it, real, life is reality. And it's, uh, if it were that easy, then everybody, we would just stamp a degree on everybody's uh, uh, back shoulder blade, right? <laughs> but it's not, it's not that easy. We, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's cost, both uh, financial and commitment to entry. And uh, even with that entry, there's, there's an additional investment emotionally and psychologically to, to complete. So again, back, I think that that goes with what employers see as uh, an, a critical assessment of individuals who have that bachelor's degree and what they're seeking as well. Okay, perfect. So now, um, Stephen, it is time for your two minute rebuttal. Um, the original statement that you made is that education is not defined properly, um, which uh, then pushes people into decision making and it's really not effective overall. Um, and Ivan's counter versus rebuttal was saying that you somewhat made his point for him that. Um, those individuals that were extremely successful actually originally did attend university and it opened up doors. So it was more than just the schooling provided. It was the networking. It was the opportunities they might have not been provided prior to. So you can start your rebuttal at two minutes right now. You're muted. I'm in the office today, so just wanting out for a background sound. Um, yeah, no, I'll hurry up then. No, no, I appreciate your point, Ivan. Um, as one, you know, backing stocks myself, I definitely wouldn't pick one that was falling. So, yeah, you know, I can understand that point 100%. Um, what, what I would say is, um, you know, if you're building up your education in a certain direction, um, say, for example, um, I would be looking to uh, study business at university um, and just focusing my whole studies towards that route and then you know once I land a job age 25 26 27 I find out that actually um, I'm no good at sales or I don't really want to be doing that Um, the issue is is that you can sometimes feel like you've wasted that time you know pushing yourself towards that certain career path and then what are your options in terms of changing if you say joined a tech company and then wanted to actually be a developer. Um, I think the way our education is set out um, is, is flawed in the fact that, and this is both in the States and in the UK as well, that it pushes you towards a certain area. And, and once you achieve that area, and this is on you know, hiring managers as well, as you know, in recruitment, someone who doesn't have that experience on their, on their resume already, it's hard for them to change their career path and really forge something. I'm working with a candidate right now who has been working on the tech side of implementations and solutions. She's looking to move into sales, but no one wants to take her. And so, you know, we need to look at ways of, of you know, presenting her CV or either she doesn't want to go back to education. So what options can we look at? Thanks. Awesome. Okay, thank you, Stephen. So now we just have two minutes individually for your closing statements. This can address the question that you guys were given of what would you change with the educational process, um, or it can just hone into your overall points of pro-education or feeling it's not a necessity. Ivan, I'm starting the clock now. Hey, so Stephen, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, I, you know, I still 
feel strongly that the, even with the example that you shared, that that individual that has the uh, bachelor's degree that has decided that, hey, this vertical has not worked for them, is going to do a lot better and have a lot more opportunities discovering their next career uh, path, right? And as an employer, from uh, my experience, I've seen companies um, and hiring managers give someone a heads up or 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 a tip um, to to offer them the job more than someone who doesn't necessarily have the education and maybe not have as much experience, and they value that degree with the experience uh, that from another industry as well. Because in addition to that, we we didn't have the opportunity to talk about transferable skills as well. So I don't think that if someone has had a change in career that that's a, that's lost because they can bring a lot of ex their experience from another industry or another company to their next career path, which is of tremendous value as well. So again, uh, pro pro education. Uh, enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the conversation. Looking forward to chatting with you more about this. Thanks again, Stephen. Awesome. All righty. Now, Stephen, you have two minutes for, like I said, you can address a question or just make an overall closing statement. Your time starts now. Sure. So, yeah, just want to thank you as well, Ivan. You made a number of great points. Um, pro education. Um, yeah, I just like to finish by really just summarizing um, the arguments that I've given. So, um, you know, I just like to highlight that education is is an imperfect system in our society. Um, and that there are certain processes and guidelines that that could and, and should be changed. Um, I would just like to say, I, you know, if we were all around from the time of Facebook when it was more popular, I was, there were people who would put their job or their education as a university of life. Um, the way I interpreted that was that people would find, you know, living the anomalies and the, the random events of life as something that can teach you probably more valuably than a school education can. Um, it's like when you have a child and you learn as you're on, on, while you're on your feet. So that's why, you know, I believe that as, as a baseline, an education outside of a, of a formal structure can be effective, useful, and potentially encouraged. But there are also um, elements in terms of unnecessary subjects at school, a, a pressure to, to join a school and be part of an education system. And finally, the, the economic um, inconsistencies between you know, how much an education can cost, how much debt it leaves students in. And finally, um, how that money is being used and, and the lack of transparency on that subject. So yeah, I feel you know, great points put forward from both sides. Um, but honestly, I, I feel that um, yeah, education isn't truly a necessity to, to be successful. Fantastic. Okay. All right. We are going to quickly shift over to the next question. Ivan and Steven, thank you guys so much for your time. I think you both made wonderful arguments. Um, now, Milo and Paul. So uh, your question is, should education hold back promotions or job opportunities? Just going in order of how I introduced you, Milo, I would love if you could start us off with your opening statement. I'm gonna put five minutes on the clock and I will give you that 30 second warning when we're nearing that. So you can go right ahead. Fantastic, thank you, Erica. So I'm gonna start out with, um, with a quote from the World Bank um, and I'm gonna read it word for word. Tertiary education is instrumental in fostering growth, reducing poverty, and boosting shared prosperity. A highly skilled workforce with lifelong access to a solid post-secondary education is a prerequisite for innovation and growth. Well-educated people are more employable, more productive, earn higher wages, and cope with economic shocks better. So that's a quote from the World Bank. And what I would like to do is introduce two key points here on the pro-education side of things um, and prioritizing those who do have tertiary education, who have degrees over those who don't within the workforce. Now, the first one is the economic reason. And as I've already mentioned, fostering growth, 
reducing poverty, promoting innovation, higher wages, and the direct link between education, increased education, and economic growth. To just sort of bolster that point there, there's a book called Factfulness, which is written by um, a Scandinavian uh, called Hans Risley, uh, Rosling, who with his son and daughter-in-law has studied facts over the space of the last 20 years or so. And the sort of ultimate point of the book is that we all see the world not as it is. And so he goes into the actual facts about these things. And again, country upon country upon country, as they've increased their education throughout the population, their economies have grown. Um, the second point is the social point, which I think is absolutely vital. It does go hand in hand with the economic point as well, that when you have uh, more economic growth, more educated societies. There are a number of things that fall out from that. You have healthier societies. You have less crime. You have more stability. You have more people voting. You have more inclusivity and you have greater equality. And so if we're looking long term to benefit society, if we prioritize those with degrees, promoting those, that then sends a message out to people, sends a message probably is a bit too strong, but it, it, it helps people identify, actually, if we go and do tertiary education, we're gonna get more likely, we're more likely to go and get promotions. So over a period of time, you get a mindset throughout the population. Um, and so encouraging those populations to go into tertiary um, education, I think is absolutely vital to then increase the economic growth, you know, social stability. I'm fully aware that there may well be people who deserve promotions, who don't get promotions because they do not have degrees. I'm fully aware of that. But if we're looking big picture about this, if we're thinking long term, actually more people will benefit from doing it this way. In the long run, more people will benefit. One thing I also wanted to add as well was um, opportunities. I know Stephen and uh, Ivan have already spoken about the cost of going to university. Uh, in the UK, it's about £10,000 a year, plus you've going got living costs, et cetera, et cetera, on top of that. And so making sure there are these opportunities for people um, to help people, that it's not just the people who can afford it. There are grants available, but again, I think it's something that we need to increase to try and help people, more people into, um, into tertiary um, education. And as I've mentioned before, societies become less disparate as economic growth increases. So we see less and less of that further down the line as more people um, are getting educated, getting better jobs um, with economic growth. So as a sort of summary of what I've said, I think prioritizing, the, prioritizing promoting those with, uh, with degrees, with further tertiary education, in the long run will benefit society economically and socially as well. And so what I am going to leave you with is a, uh, a quote by someone called Ludger Weissmann, uh, who is a German economist and professor of econo economics. I probably pronounced his name completely wrong, for which I apologize. Um, anyway, he's won numerous awards for work that he's done, findings to do with the economy, education, and it's this. Surveying the most recent empirical evidence, it shows the crucial role of education for individual and societal prosperity. Education is a leading determinant of economic growth, employment, and earnings in modern knowledge-based economies. Ignoring the economic dimension of education would endanger the prosperity of future generations with widespread repercussions for poverty, social exclusion, and sustainability of social security systems. Fantastic. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Paul, it is now your, uh, your turn to do your opening. Now, remember, this isn't into argument of what Milo said. You will have that opportunity with a counter. Um, again, your question is, should education hold back promotions or job opportunities? Your five minutes begins right now. All right, my, my quick answer will be no. Promotions should not be held back by degree. They should be based on merit, your contribution to the organization, right? 25% uh, of the U.S. workforce has a bachelor's degree. 
which means that three out of four people that you see that drive our economy do not, right? Uh, back to the, uh, the cost aspect, uh, well over $100,000 for a degree, 66% of graduates, two thirds of them are in debt. So they're starting the game behind, right? So as a, an illustration, I wanna talk about my first job because it's kind of a petri dish of a lot of learnings. Uh, so my first job, out of, I was a, a Naval officer on a nuclear attack submarine. The interesting thing about it is you got to, you're with people for 60, 90 days at a time. And uh, it, it was international, right? Uh, Mediterranean, Car Caribbean, working with other navies. And it was 120 men. You know, now these days there's women, but back then it was men. 15 of those were officers. They had degrees, a lot from the Naval Academy, right? Uh, which means that over 100 were enlisted men with no degrees. And look at the roles that people played. So uh, the officers were managers, overseers, administrators, right? Without subject matter knowledge, their, their job was to ensure that certain things happened. You know, they rotated from different divisions. Um, they were a jack of all, master of none, right? Uh, they knew enough to listen, but not really to, to drive things. So now let's talk about the enlisted the enlisted guys who were, um, and they say that the senior enlisted run the Navy, the enlisted crew, the, the chiefs, the, the first class petty officers, E6s run it. You know, they diagnosed and repaired incredibly sophisticated multi-million dollar equipment, right? They actually turned the wrenches. Uh, many of them were just as smart. They simply didn't have the opportunity to go to college and get a degree. Not everyone comes from you know, an economic situation to, to do that. Uh, to prepare, they were sent to um, specific schools, right? To gain domain knowledge, deep domain knowledge. So uh, I think organizations need a mix. They need some leaders. They need people with a deep domain knowledge, right? So uh, you need people who are able to go down deep into rabbit holes. You need people who know things that other people don't know. And those people should be promoted based upon the merit that they bring. So, um, you know, there are certain fields that do require a master's. You know, I look at the young people in my life. You know, I have a, a daughter that's a speech pathologist that requires an advanced degree. But there's others that it's not about an MBA. It's about a trade school. It's about a certification, right? I have a, a son who's in IT and, uh, hey, are you gonna get an MBA? No, there's a security plus certification. There's an Amazon Web Services certification, a solution architect certification, right? Uh, I have another son-in-law that's changing careers and he's not getting a, an advanced degree. It's a project manager certification, right? So, um, College prepares you for certain things, uh, and hopefully you're in a position to uh, drop in and, and contribute, right? But you, you need somebody with deep domain knowledge where the engine breaks and the world comes to a standstill. So let me shift to sales for a minute. Um, the good news about sales, it is the most measured profession in history, right? It is a meritocracy. Your scores are posted on the wall along with everyone else's. Um, one of the best articles I read about selling said that the most successful people have a balance of empathy and ego drive. If you have too much of one and not enough of the other, you either bowl people over or you get bowl over, right? So um, another thing about selling is you have to mirror your prospect. You need, you need people who really understand the domain or people figured out. They don't know what they're talking about, right? The last thing I'll say is the key indicator in sales, fire in the belly, right? Uh, could it be that the non-college is scrappier, tries harder, does what they have to do to be a support to their family? So uh, less about degree, more about the skills and drive that they bring to the table. Okay, great. Um... All right, now Milo, you are going to go with your counter argument. So this will go directly after Paul's opening statement, just to recap a little bit. His overall idea is that it should be based on merit, 
There are a lot of success stories of individuals that are really driving the process that aren't the officers, that aren't the higher level management, that don't really need those degrees in the workforce. Um, so it shouldn't hold back promotions. So you can go ahead and start your five minutes. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. It's always good to uh, meet a fellow veteran. Um, and I think, you know, what you were saying, uh, particularly about the training in the Navy, I think absolutely, you know, I get that completely. Having that deep domain knowledge, I think, is absolutely critical. And having a mixture of that and the leaders, absolutely, I agree with. What I think is important, is interesting to note, is that actually, I'm sure yourself and the people that you were working with that had that deep domain knowledge were trained up in some way. And so having that education is vital. And whilst it might not be further education, you know, degree standard, actually, you know, what you're doing there is, I, th I think for me, highlights the importance of education. And, and no doubt your time in the Navy, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this, um, how what you learned there, the training you had, how that helps um, later on and throughout your, uh, your career. Um, Again, what you were saying about um, based on merit, yes, absolutely, I agree on that. I think other things come into it as well. And, you know, the potential side of things is quite interesting as well. And I think people probably have more potential, maybe this is a you know, slightly up for the debate, may have more potential if they have that background with a further education that they have more knowledge in certain areas that others don't. Um, something that I think also is worth noting at this stage is that I'm completely aware that education is not perfect. You know, the further education, and I know we've heard various people um, and Stephen particularly saying um, that actually, you know, there's certain things that you learnt that you just don't use now. I think Portuguese 18th century um, yeah, literature was one of those. Um, but I think something, that is important that you know education is evolving i think people are realizing that it is evolving and the skills you learn as you go through writing essays for example on 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 things they're useful skills to have and they may not necessarily surface in the same way that you might imagine um and to give a sort of point from my own experience that's you know a university i did latin american studies i did not do very well at all in my degree. Um, but it's funny how about 16 years later, doing the Latin American studies suddenly came back into my life. And I hadn't, uh, I hadn't, it, out of nowhere it came. And I ended up working with Latin American government, uh, sorry, Latin American entrepreneurs um, for the British government. So I think sometimes these things come back into your life when you least expect it and much, much further down the line. Um, but I think, you know, what I would sort of highlight overall is that, you know, the increasing um, necessity for education, I personally think is, yeah, is very, very important and, um, and is backed up, I think, by, you know, some of the things and some of the, um, the rules, sorry, not the rules, um, the quotes that I've said. Really well said. And you had about uh, a minute 30 left. Do you want to just yield that time? Okay. Um, <laughs> what I would like to ask um, you, Paul, that what do you think is missing from higher education at the moment? What would make it more vital to you to have in higher education? Would it be more along the people skills side of things, which I know doesn't feature hugely, you know, the emotional intelligence side of things, um, but I think it would be interesting to see what would sort of turn your opinion slightly more towards edu higher education being more valuable. Okay, great. Uh... Sorry, I just didn't want my alarm to go off. Okay, yeah. so Paul, now remember, this is gonna be very tempting to answer that question right now, but we are going to have your counter based on his opening. So I will remind you of this question he asked you, um, but the main things that I want your counter to address is his opening statement, which went through the big picture and long-term um, benefits overall to uh, economic, societal, and cost perspectives of education that Milo made in his first argument. His overall, um, I think, 
the statement was that it is going to better society, the overall education that somebody is getting. So um, you can go ahead. I'm starting your five minutes now for your counter. All righty. Um, so as far as, as education and, and bettering society, um, people know what happens in the company, right? They're there every day. They see who is pulling the wagon, who is laying down in the wagon, right? So whether you have a degree uh, or you don't, it's really about the contribution you make. Um, if people are promoted because they have degrees, it is soul crushing to, to certain others. Uh, it needs to be merit-based. It needs to be quantified. It needs to be uh, understood. And uh, people know who the leaders are and they come from a lot of different um, parts of life. So uh, my view is that uh, I think if you exit college able to think about any, any um, problem, have tools to approach it with, then you're ahead of the pack. Uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people are mired into a certain profession that they end up switching out of. So it's really not as effective as it could be. Um, skills don't have to be built in the classroom. Uh, they come from parents, they come from grandparents, they come from the, the people around you. So it's not purely about the, um, the school. Um, you know, Erica, those are the key points I wanted to make right now. All right, awesome. Um, okay, so now, Milo, it's your time for the rebuttal. The rebuttal uh, to Paul's overall counter is that the skills that you learn um, through education can also be taught through family, friends, and life experiences. So he is disagreeing adamantly that um, on your initial point of that it really is going to be the, the key to the economic growth. Instead, it's sort of the, the environment you're raised in. So you have two minutes on the clock for a rebuttal, and I am starting that right now. Lovely, thank you. And um, Paul, thank you for that. And, you know, I'm completely with you on that soul crushing for people who get overlooked because they don't have degrees. What I would say is that as more and more people do get degrees, that then becomes less common. But I think going back to my point earlier on, that in order to help society, there will be people who are overlooked more than further down the line. And I think it's something of one of those things. It's you know, you know, which is the you know what what is you know what's for the greater good that we could ask ourselves for that. Um, I get your point about contribution completely. I completely agree. But I think as more and more people have degrees, they can contribute more and more as well. And I suppose that links into my point about um, yeah uh, about being promoted with degrees. Um, people know who the leaders are, absolutely. And I think one of the things that does come into this is the sort of confidence side of things that it's, um, you know, and pride in having a degree. And, you know, a number of people over the course of my life, the amount of people who said to me, I was the first person in my family to get a degree, and the pride with which they say that is unbelievable. And I think having that pride, that confidence, I think builds on um, onto the sort of leadership part of things, acknowledged that not everyone will be a leader. You need that deep domain knowledge as well. Um, what I would also, as a last point, highlight is I agree with you, skills don't have to be built in the classroom. I think that you learn so much from um, family, environment, but I think certain things are important within an education, a higher education field. All righty. Um, so now, Paul, here's your opportunity for the rebuttal. And as a reminder, Milo's argument and question he asked you in his um, counter was, what is missing to make education more vital in your eyes? So feel free to answer that question as well as um, speak towards anything that he's mentioned that maybe you want to come back with with an argument to your side. It's two minutes and I will start that right now. All righty. What I would say is that um, a lot of people leave college without basic life skills, right? 
uh, the, the sounds funny, but balancing a checkbook and, and just the things you need to uh, live your life as a, as a human. Uh, certain courses get very, very deep in, into accounting or engineering, um, which, which is needed for a particular job, but there are some gaps with people. Um, you know, it's funny, there's a, a debate on LinkedIn, I'm not sure if people have seen it, about trade schools, about people saying, let's make it, let's make it uh, appealing. You know, it's not for everybody. Uh, education, college degrees, and I think that uh, those people need to be supported. Remember, 75% of people don't have degrees. Uh, what, what can be done? So, you know, we talk about uh, Milo raising society by education. Um, it doesn't have to be a college degree. It, it, it's, it's preparing someone to have self-esteem. It's preparing someone to support their family. It's preparing someone to, to provide for their kids and to raise them to be, to be good people. So, um, that's good, Erica. Okay, great. Um, a quick question, Paul, since we do have about 30 seconds on the clock, that's 75% of people that do not have degrees. Is that U.S.? Is that global? Or is that a specific region of the world? That's the United States. United States. Okay. Perfect. I was just curious about that. I, I liked that stat um, and I never heard it before. All right, Milo, now it is time for your final and closing statement. So this can address the question specifically um, of holding back promotions, if that's sort of okay, or it can speak to your um, overall point. Regardless, you have two minutes and you can go ahead and go now. Lovely, thank you. Um, so Paul, thank you for that. I agree with you about the basic life skills. And I think perhaps somewhere where we probably overlap is that maybe it needs to be looked at holistically, right from the first day you go to nursery up until the end of higher education. That if people, a society stands back and looks at it as a whole and think we need these skills, you know, we need to learn how cash flows, you know, we need to learn how to change a tire, we need to do all these things. I think that's really, really important with that. Um, what I think I'd sort of highlight again is just this need for um, for people to go to university for, to get more and more educated so that that then helps drive the economic and the social side of things. And something that I think I, I sort of see is that people are becoming more and more focused on learning and education. And as a sort of final point, what I'd like to sort of introduce is that if we can go into everything we do, our life, work, with that education focus that it's all about learning, I think we will all do better and I think economies and societies will tend to do better. So what I'm going to leave you with is a quote uh, by um, Nelson Mandela, which is this. I never fail. I either win or learn. I like that. I actually haven't heard that quote before, and that's like quite wonderful, especially with such a recognizable name and person who has produced so many wonderful statements. I haven't heard that before. That's really wonderful. Okay, so Paul, now it is your time. The last uh, speaking point of the day, you have two minutes um, to speak to your point of education not being a necessity, as well as answering the question of if it should hold back promotions. You have two minutes, and you can go right ahead. Thank you. It should definitely not hold back promotions. Promotions should be based on merit. If, if someone can get to that point uh, without a college degree, more power to them. So, um, you know, it's not for everyone to be shuffled right into a four-year college degree, right? Um, domain knowledge, deep domain knowledge about so many things on this planet are absolutely required, right? And they should be rewarded. If they're not rewarded, then it's a, it's, a, it's a bad formula. So uh, I think it's important to respect the differences. I think it's important as a, as a leader that the biggest compliment I can get is when someone tells me, you got the best out of me, right? That's what we got to shoot for. Whether, whether you have a degree, um, don't care. It, it's what you bring. It's what's in your heart. It, it's what you contribute to the team. So all right, Erica. 
All right, wonderful. So um, I know we allotted till 1215 Eastern, which is 415 GMT. Um, but overall, I wanted to thank all of the speakers. I thought all of the points were really strong. And honestly, I find myself leaning towards one side, but I might be right in the middle after those arguments. So I really loved everything, some of the stats, some of the personal experiences, some of the quotes, just everything I felt was really strong. A wonderful opportunity to hear a different point of view and a really understandable way. Um, so I think we achieved that. I know Resmarks is going to be pushing out some marketing for all the listeners, um, answering questions that have come into the Q&A, as well as maybe putting polls up. The poll that I can see right now um, is that 78% of the people listening are on the pro education and 22% feel that education is not a necessity. Um, so I am sharing those results now which um, that might be to, to the speakers really either changing minds or they were on that side from the beginning. But um, either way, I, I personally feel I'm, I'm torn 50-50 after this. So um, again, I appreciate the time. Doug, thank you for this opportunity and, and feel free to sign us off. Oh, you're muted, Doug. Thank you. You, you were moved a little bit in terms of your thought process. Yeah, I, I think I started, I, I got my bachelor's degree at East Carolina University in business administration with a focus on management. Um, and I felt, or I'm sorry, marketing. Um, and I felt that uh, I, I didn't learn some of the key things in my day to day. Um, and if I would have went any other route, would I have known? And so I always sort of questioned it if I felt education was strong. And that's sort of where Ivan and I had a disagreement at first where, you know, we got into a deep conversation, but after this hearing Ivan and Milo's true thought processes, I think I'm, I'm, tr I'm torn um, of just the, the effect on the economy and everything like that. But then also Paul and Stephen made great points that I sort of prior to the uh, conversation agreed with and it sort of continued that thought process for me. So absolutely torn. I thought the points, I agree, that I thought the points made were really excellent. And there were some things said today that I hadn't really thought about, at least for a while. So I appreciate particularly, um, actually everybody, um, but I thought the people who had the hardest job were to argue that education was less important. And so I, I admire the points that were brought out there. I think there were two things that um, I think are worth noting. Um, one of the things I was thinking about during this is above and beyond the career, above and beyond uh, what happens in, in, in an office is, is the life skills that, that several of the speakers uh, talked about. And so one of the things that's really impacted me the last 24 hours was watching that young woman on Russian TV put the sign behind and say no war and, and make the commitment that basically this is something I, I, I believe in and I may die for. Um, and that those kinds of decisions and the decision process to get there are, I guess, complicated or maybe they're easy. I don't know. I think what we learn in society generally is they're hard to do because most people probably make either the wrong decision or they make the decision that's more geared toward themselves personally rather than the bigger whole. And so when the when that complexity between our individual self and society as a whole come together, it requires a certain thought process that very often happens in schools. And I think, again, above and beyond work, there are other things that several of you talked about in terms of the value of education. And the last thing I'd like to say kind of in closing would be something that IE Business School had spoken about at Global Chamber prior, and this was the 100 year life, that as we get to age older and, and live longer, in fact, somebody mentioned Hans Rosling, Riesling, Rosling, who's one of my favorite guys because of his, <laughs> if you ever read some of his stuff, it's just fascinating about the long life of, of people. Definitely uh, check that out. He's passed away the last several years, but his work lives on really quite impressive. But the 100 year life, the fact that more and more people are living longer, and in fact, half of, over half the people born today will live 
over 100 years old, um, means that our careers are different. So it's more than just our parents used to work at one place for their entire career and now kind of like the next generation is multiple people. It's it's that we work past retirement. It's work, It means that we have multiple, I think, the, she had seven career changes as average for people uh, coming into the workforce today that are that are predicted. So career changes are happening more frequently and education creates a great framework for that. And I think that's something that I didn't hear today, maybe it was talked about, but I think that can't be forgotten for anybody who's thinking about an education that you know, whatever you're going to do next may not be the whole gig for the rest of your life. So be prepared for the next and the next and the next iteration. So I'm curious what you think about that. Did you say someone specifically? Oh, uh, anybody. Uh, and any thoughts uh, about kind of that? And do you give advice to, to career applicants around not just the current role, but Kind of thinking about kind of the next one that that's a little bit harder probably for for you to think about given what your role is in the in in the workforce but it's probably something you see all the time so doug i I'll, i agree with you 100 percent. and my thought around that was when i said options right you're you're not the more you know the the bigger the the smaller the world gets but the bigger your ideas get right and you gain these skills that can transfer into different areas as well. So you're, um, you're you're ever changing and evolving as well. So I do agree with you, and I think education plays um, a great part to that. There's a there's a question out here where the person's asking about experience and the abundance of resources out online, etc. And the, I, I do want to mention that I I, I think. There are few people in history who have had the discipline and the ability to, to self-teach in a way that they're able to, um, to advance their careers. More often than not, they need a setting, a formal setting, or uh, someone who is able, uh, Paul mentioned family, friends, et cetera, your environment, which is 100% true, but we all know, um, reality people don't listen to those that are close to them you need someone in a setting that you can wrap yourself around and respect and be held accountable to to those settings and to that that formality um you know i we've all had parents how many of us wish that we listened to our parents more so that's just uh that's just all i'll say well and i i also have to say that paul made a really great point in in his opening and I think his counter of talking about trade school. And this argument and this whole debate was based around a four-year degree. This was based around a, a bachelor's or that you know higher education beyond an associate's and or a, a, um, uh, a high school diploma, which is what you know we speak of in the States. Um, but he, he spoke of trade school, which I thought was a really interesting um, argument to bring into the conversation because that sort of really agrees heavily with what Doug and Ivan are saying, but it is taking you away from that classic educational program, which I thought was just an absolutely strong argument to make of just saying you get more specialized when you know the, the route that you're trying to go in. So I thought that went hand in hand with sort of the overall consensus, right? <laughs> yeah, and you touch on, I think another uh, really important point is at the end of the day, hopefully we're getting more and more to the point where people who are managing their careers are are not just doing it for the money but are doing it for fun are doing it for continued learning um to, to your point right that to and ivan's point as well that the key part here is to keep learning not hit you know you got the job and now for the rest of your life, you know, here you go. When I when I moved to Japan, one of the people in our office was a fellow who had gone how many years? 40, was it 40 some odd years, never taken a sick day, never ever like never did anything that I could ever determine. But he had hired in, he was he came into work every day, literally for 40 plus years, he had multiple years 
of sick or uh, sick pay that he had accumulated to, to, to finish. And, and I, it, it, it both fascinated me and bothered me that somebody could go through their life and, and have that be the achievement that you basically almost achieve nothing at work other than showing up. And wh what was that movie where, you know, just showing up was the key thing, right? Why not really the emphasis be on what we accomplish and how and and recognizing that to be able to accomplish more, you need to work with people. You need to have your brain expanded, Ivan, to, to your point. And so the, the working with people is probably part of that book learning type stuff that we we I didn't get as as certainly as a chemical engineer when I was coming through through college. You know, those are kind of the things that you need to be able to to harness that are not has not historically been part of. Uh, of education. And so I will say, though, and kind of in maybe another final conclusion, um, one of the things that's happening right now with Global Chamber is we're moving our headquarters into Thunderbird School of Global Management. And I thought as I've taken a tour, a couple tours now of the building, it's, it's state of the art education. And one of the things that's revolutionized is instead of those auditoriums where and I, the first ones I ever saw were in my chemistry classes where you'd have 300 kids right in a, in a classroom with a sloped area and you have your desk area and you're listening to these lectures by people. That's not available at Thunderbird anymore. Um, what is available, however, are tables that fit maybe eight or so people standing around yeah. them. The tables themselves are computers. Um, and the professor stands in the middle of all these tables. And instead of the lectures in, a, in an auditorium, you've heard the lecture on your laptop, you know, overnight or wherever, someplace outside the classroom. And you're there in the classroom to solve problems. And the professor is there to help you solve problems and to kind of break down barriers. And so those are the kinds of things beyond, you know, education that, education can provide, right? Problem solving and people skills and leadership capability. It, por it borders on the training aspects, right? Of making you a more usable person, both at work and, uh, and at home. So anyway, those were some of the things I really appreciate everybody's thoughts uh, uh, and really appreciate uh, hopefully all everybody getting some additional information and some perspectives. Any other final thoughts by any of the speakers or anything else that needs to be said? I think everybody looks good. Uh, just again, thank you, Doug and Global Chamber for this opportunity and all the speakers for, I know, um, coming in with very opinionated sides to the argument that um, I, I think I think everybody can agree there's some gray area when it comes to education of you can understand certain things and other things you're sort of um, very specific on. So I appreciate everybody just taking the time to do this, uh, especially the speakers and then all the listeners that joined in and, and found this useful. Any final comments about Resmarks? Resmarks is uh, a firm that is posed with uh, many different types of, of struggling clients and candidates that are trying to just further their growth or their careers. Um, we're a global recruitment firm that specializes in uh, first feet on the ground. So things like this, conversations like this come up so often. And um, I would say Resmarks, just speaking on behalf, be open to these conversations because we always are and we're talking with so many different cultures on a daily level that um, you know you always have to be very receptive of different different opinions um, and different ideas about things because nothing is ever the way that you just see it solely so um, I would just say on behalf of Resmarks you know this is our day to day and I'm, I'm just happy that everybody might be able to experience a little bit of a, a strong and fun debate um, and difference of opinions. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Erica, and all the speakers. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, Thank everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye. Have a lovely day. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Derek.